Now that you're all stressed and strained out, let's uh, go through a more fun example, which is uh, Poisson's ratio. So when I pull my material, so this is my initial state, I pull this stress, again, 2, 1, I apply some sigma 2, 2, there's going to be some strain, uh, epsilon 2, 2, normal. Uh, this is my initial state, so my final state, what happens? Well, actually, I'm going to draw it on here. My material is going to extend laterally, so you can kind of look at this. Oops, oops, sorry about that. Let me get into, into here. It is going to extend laterally here, so we could kind of look at this as my, you could redraw this as my lateral and axial to kind of match our notes here. So it is going to extend uh, ooh, axially. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> it is going to extend axially. Uh, always make I make a mistake every once in a while there too, uh, as and many of you always know. Uh, so we're going to extend axially and we're going to contract laterally. Again, that's just kind of the nature of uh, kind of materials. Most materials will uh, kind of exhibit this type of uh, kind of Poisson's ratio. Uh, a positive Poisson's ratio. Now, sometimes they're negative Poisson ratio materials, but we'll get into those in another course. Uh, they're very exotic uh, and they're kind of, uh, it's, they're really cool though. But anyways, so let's look at kind of these Poisson ratio values. So Poisson's ratio is the uh, ratio minus the lateral contraction over the axial strain. So what is this value of axial strain, positive or negative? Well, again, in our sign notation, it is extending axial, so that's a positive. Laterally, we are being compressed, so we're shrinking in that direction, so that's going to be a negative. So our Poisson's ratio is definitely going to be um, typically a positive. So our Poisson's ratio, and these are some really critical values to kind of know. Um, 0.3 for metals, 0.5 for rubbers, 0.4, I would say 0.4 for my polymeric materials and then 0 0.2 for core accelerant materials or ceramics. So really important, so let's metals equals 0 0.3, polymers 0 0.4, ceramics 0 0.2. Uh, and then again for rubber, 0 0.5. So very, very critical parameters for Poisson's ratio. Again, I will ne definitely not typically give those values unless I really need to, you know, uh, emphasize a certain uh, kind of problem, but we are going to utilize these uh, moving forward in terms of how we develop uh, these kind of complex uh, stress states. So more on that a little bit later. And again, there's some materials that are have a negative Poisson's ratio, so they actually, they would uh, contract here and extend as you pull here, but they're very interesting materials. But anyways, uh, that's it. So again, axial lateral. Come on, Josh. You can get those. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Uh, and the, the other thing, oh, sorry, before we uh, uh, before we head off there, it kind of makes sense too, right, that this value is going to be 0 0.5 is actually the max, typically the maximum value you'll see for Poisson's ratio. And you kind of, it makes sense, right, that the this, it shouldn't be a value greater than 1 because this axial extension is going to be much larger than this kind of, kind of tr contraction there. Um, and you can kind of think about why these values change for different materials. So for ceramics, obviously it's even, you know, those, you kind of think of the, the atomistic structure, right? Um, so that lateral contraction is going to be hard because again, you're fighting against those um, kind of fairly strong, or not fairly strong, but strong intramolec uh, intramolecular interactions, these ionic bonding. Um, so it's not going to be as kind of pliable or it won't deform as much as, again, uh, your other materials like polymers with the lower Young's modulus. So, it's just kind of a, again, uh, a sanity check to see what's going on. So next time we're going to get into some complex stress states, and then we're going to build up into um, some much more complex um, kind of mechanical analysis and some equations that you could use um, to analyze stress states. So I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.